I'm Put ready whenever you are. All right, Sean from Slingin' Ink here. We are with uh, Real Big Fish. Uh, huh? November 10th, 2010. Name of the tour is Real Big Fish versus the Aquabats. If you guys just want to go around, give your name and what you do in the band. I'm Johnny Christmas, and I play trumpet in the band in the Real Big Fish. He's very excited, always. He's been up all day. <laughs> My name's Aaron, and I play guitar and sing in Real Big Fish. And I'm Scott Kloppenstein, and I play guitar and trumpet and sing backups in the Real Big Fish. Nice. Uh, I just got some basic ten questions. Um, if you don't feel like answering, you can just say, you know, fuck you, Sean, I don't want to answer it. <laughs> yeah, we're more, we're more like, we're, we're more passers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, who's your current tattoo artist? If you have more than one, feel free to name them in the shop they work at. When's the last time you got a tattoo? It's been it's been a long time since I had any work done. So I just moved to uh, New York about five years ago, so I got to find a, a guy. A friend of mine says he knows a guy. He's got great work. So I've got most of my tattoos done in, at a place called Aces High Tattoo in Fullerton, California. A guy named Todd. Todd. He's very good. There's actually an Aces High in West Palm Beach as well. Uh, yeah, nice. I also got this terrible logo of our band, the ugly Real Big Fish logo, done in Philadelphia at Body Graphics. Body Graphics. By a guy named Javier. Not Javier. <laughs> <laughs> Am I with Blake? Skeeter. Oh, oh blur. Skeeter, yeah. You Is it know. Skeeter? All well, the best no, tattoo artists are named Skeeter. No, it's not. Ruben Rehnquist. Yeah. Guy's He's got to ask his girlfriend. She knows. Tony! Tony! Tattoo Tony! Of course! Tony! <laughs> you also did this one. It's the hula girl. Uh, she dances. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. uh, <laughs> yeah, last time I actually saw you guys was uh, way back in the 90s. Um, you guys played Sunfest in West Palm Beach. That was a pretty long time ago. When was the 90s? That was <laughs> over 10 years ago. Oh, that, that, oh, those, oh, those 90s. <laughs> was that, uh, like, late 90s or mid 90s? I don't know. I was before you were born. I, I wasn't even, I wasn't before, even. Before your time. I wasn't even in the womb at that time. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm tickling his daddy's underwear. Oh, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> now, Aaron, you, you should change you underwear if it tickles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Aaron, uh, you've been in the band since 1992, and Dan and Scott have been involved with the band uh, for more than 15 years. Uh, you guys have gone through so many band members since 1992. How was it, you know, going through so many band members? Uh, did you guys ever think about calling it quits? Um, I think everyone, <laughs> I think everyone probably has been through a period where you're like, ah, oh, fuck this shit. But uh, I think we love to play and we love what we do. Luckily, we have a lot of fans that support us and make us able to keep going and touring and doing what we do. So, I don't know, usually when, when someone leaves, it's for a good reason and things happen for the better. You know. Usually. Usually. We've watched people go crazy, though. And that's sad. Sometimes there's bad musicians or, like, people that just didn't get along with everybody else. And we get new people who are nice and <laughs> love to play their instruments. Well, yeah. And are good cuddlers. <laughs> Sometimes it's just like, some, you know, the road's not for everybody. Right on. It's just especially the madness. Especially when you've been doing this like these guys have since they were 16 and pretty much touring for that entire time. Yeah. Uh, a lot of guys find out that this isn't their cup of tea. This isn't what they uh, thought it would be. Sometimes the days can be really hard. Be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's awesome. It's still hard to fathom, you know, just listen, back in high school, you guys pretty much just came out, and now you're still rocking 15 years after that. It's hard to believe it's that. It's hard for us to believe. <laughs> 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 now, when Third Wave uh, Ska came out with a bang in the 90s, uh, especially with your hit album, Turn the Radio Off, which blew up in the Ska world, hidden billboard charts, uh, your song Sellout being played on MTV, and also your rendition of AHA's Take On Me, which, by the way, is a badass song. But thanks. And, um... You guys landed a role in uh, the movie Basketball, um, which that's a pretty big accomplishment right there. How did yeah. that come about? And, um, you know, especially again in that movie, uh, Basketball. I think with Basketball, we were just kind of blowing up at the time. We were like all over the radio. We were like we were like a hot new band. We were, we were, <laughs> we were, we were so hot right then. And 
Uh, I think also our record label got put in charge of putting out the soundtrack for basketball. So that's how they also kind of got us in there. But we need a hot new band to be in the one of the scenes in our movie. And our record label's like, how about Ruby Cliffs? Because they have a song called Beer. We got them right here. Yeah. <laughs> that's true, too. We were young and slim. However we got in that movie, I don't think it was because <laughs> the Matt and Trey are fans of us. Because they seemed very confused when they met us. <laughs> <laughs> this is Real Big Fish. <laughs> WTF. Uh, Oh, hey. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. I don't I'll, like that. Yeah, uh, the movie was put out on Universal, and then our record label was a subsidiary of Universal, right. and so there was the whole Universal thing. Oh, that too. That too. That going too. on? <laughs> that too. We're still trying to really explain how we got in baseball. We, we don't, don't know. really know. We <laughs> just... It, it was so early. That they made us get there. We've done a lot of strange things. We played on Yo Gabba Gabba Live yesterday in the live stage show. Yeah, I was reading that on my Facebook. Little kids. Yeah. That, was, oh. that, was, uh, that was awesome. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I saw I saw Biz Marquis. <laughs> I was walking down the hallway and there was Biz wow. Marquis on his BlackBerry and I didn't want to bother. That's classic right there. There's Biz Marquis. <laughs> <laughs> now your name, Real Big Fish. Uh, I know you guys got goofy lyrics, which is awesome, and you guys put on a hell of a show. Um, where did the name come from? It just, I don't know, it started out as the Fisher King after the movie that we loved with Robin Williams. It's called the Fisher King. And somehow it mutated into Real Big Fish, I don't know. Not the Fisher King. <laughs> <laughs> We've been trying to explain that one too for a long time. <laughs> we do a lot of things kind of like in the moment, yeah. off the cuff, and sometimes those From ideas stick and stay, and then ten years later you go, hey, what happened? We, we spend a lot of time going, wait, what happened? We like to be random. Mm-hmm. Confusing. Yeah. Sometimes we confuse ourselves. <laughs> Definitely. Anyways. Now, I see that you guys have been busy since 2009 uh, by releasing Fame, Fortune, and Fortification, uh, of Best of Us for the Rest of Us, and your DVD, Real Big Fish Live in Concert. Uh, do we hear a comeback coming for you guys? Oh, uh, we also put out our Best of... Call it, did you say that? Yes. Our last track. You named off a bunch of names. Yeah. Uh, uh. We have never gone away, so c- coming back. We can't make a comeback <laughs> until we've gone away. <laughs> Big explosive comeback. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're gonna keep going and doing what we do, as nice. long as people keep coming to the shows, and which they seem to. They seem to so far. So yeah. We're, we're bad. They like they like to watch us make fools of ourselves. On the stage. Which we're good at. <laughs> I definitely enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was also reading that you did a recent interview um, stating that you, you guys are going to be releasing a new album, possibly in 2011, and possibly a holiday album. Can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, people are always, like, fans are always asking for new stuff, new albums, and we always tell them, oh, yeah, next year, next year, we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> working on it. So when we get to 2011, it'll be in 2012. Then we'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, we haven't done it yet, but... <laughs> We're going to really start Armageddon now. We're going to get down there and get to, you know, one of these days. Get to business. <laughs> nice. We will eventually, though. Yeah, we're going to make an album based on the Mayan calendar. I don't know about the holiday album. We've had that idea come in and out, go in and out, okay. come in and out, go in and out. Yeah. And the holidays come and go, and we haven't done anything. Yeah. <laughs> we go, oh, that would be fun. And then it's, you know, New Year's <laughs> Eve, we're like... Did we make Did that album? Christmas. Uh, next year. Next year. Because you have to make a Christmas album in spring. It just seems kind of weird doing Christmas tunes in spring. Well, I mean, there's lots of other holidays. Oh, you know, yeah. Secretary's Day. Flag Day. Day. Album. <laughs> the many holidays. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Um... Now, you guys must have some crazy fan stories or some crazy tour stories for being around as long as you have. Like to share any? Well, the one that, that happened lately. Something happened lately? Did something happen lately? I don't know. The one that always pops into my mind is the, the, the leg. Which which leg? The Australian leg. Because there was different legs. One, one old person brought their grandma's, their dead grandma's prosthetic leg that was for us to sign. That was Atlanta. And then another time, <laughs> someone threw their own prosthetic leg on the stage. And that was Melbourne, Australia. So... There's a running thing about Australians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I feel like something did happen recently. Done. Yeah. We signed babies. 
Mm-hmm. Actually signed a cinema mm-hmm. sword last time we were in town here. That's right. In Denver. We, we had a, uh, I had a fam come up to me this year recently uh, and say that her parents uh, played, her mom constantly played uh, our record Turn the Radio Off while she was in the womb. <laughs> that's, a, that's a new one. I actually gave her terrible ADD. Yeah. <laughs> Puts the things into perspective for us, too. Right on. It's still old. Yeah. <laughs> Old, old, yet, yet, yet. One time we sang the national anthem at a Miami Dolphins game. Yeah, that was in front of 50,000 people. Yeah, that was interesting. How was that? We had to be serious, so it was very, very, very difficult for us. <laughs> very nervous. People, people who really like football and go to the games take the national anthem unbelievably well, seriously. We're supposed to take the national anthem seriously. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's supposed to. I feel like if you make it, is it like a too soon <laughs> joke? Like, oh, no, it's just. Francis Scott Key, Emiliano Key. Oh. Too soon. Remember when Roseanne Barr did it? Yeah. <laughs> she didn't want that to happen. Yeah, I suppose that's... Well, and the thing that did happen was we finished the song. We, we were kind of proud of what we did. And... Um, we remember the words! You know, and as we're walking away, you know, people are cheering and... You know, that's a crowd noise. And um, <laughs> and then as we're walking away, all of a sudden they start going... <laughs> they start booing. And I don't know if you've ever been booed before by anything. But when it's 50,000 people booing you, it, no matter who you are and how it, it, good you feel about yourself, you're just going to feel bad. And um, we, we walked off, and the lady who, who was our liaison, uh, she was like, how'd you guys do? I'm like, we're, they're booing. They're booing us. She's like, what? I'm like, they're booing. We did horrible. And I'm like, no, sweet. She's like, no, sweetheart, the visiting team is taking the field. <laughs> And then I felt bad for the visiting team. They just wanted to play some sports. <laughs> but you got a boom? That's got to be hard to play sports. You don't know. It's got to be hard to you play sports when, when 50,000 people boo you. <laughs> you know? Sorry. I've been booed by Canada. And, yeah, uh, you got booed by Canada. Twice. <laughs> twice. And, um, wow. That's a record. And, well, and because they're so polite. Yeah, well, on the stage, when you refer to them as Americans, they get mad. Because <laughs> they don't know what city you're in. But the, the Canada is part of America. It's not. It's, it's not. North America. That's true. That is true. So they're Americans. But, you know, they I was bridging the gap. You have to be called Canadians. I was bridging the gap. No. Why has it all got to be separated? It's the media trying to separate us all. <laughs> anyway, to ask on that question. <laughs> oh, what was the question that began? That was the next question. Next, next, story. next question. Next stories. question. Weird stories. All right, now, how does it make you guys feel that your music still to this day inspires and helps so many people through some tough times in their lives? That's awesome. That's, That's really crazy. crazy. That's why we keep on doing this. I mean, really, we have people come up all the time, whether they... Now, we were on the war tour this this uh, summer, and, you know, you have a lot of people that are in the military going, you know, I'm, I'm leaving or I'm just getting back, and your music has really helped me, you know, stay sane in this time, and we can't help but get emotional about something like that. That's just... Fantastic. A lot of people are like, oh, your music helped me through a bad breakup. Yeah. Or your music <laughs> cheered me up because I was having an awful day. And, yeah. Well, do you remember? Do you remember that girl Sarah? Mm-hmm. There was this girl named Sarah, and she was uh, uh, accosted and um, physically. And they found out that the person who caught they caught him, and they found out that he had a sexually transmitted disease. He had HIV, and so. She actually followed us for an entire... She got the blood test done, and then she followed us for a week, like, in her car and, like, this whole nine yards while she was waiting for the test. And, like, we, like... She came up to us at the show, and she was like, hey, and she told us this whole story, and we're, so we, like, hung out with her, and she was got her into all the shows and stuff. And it was really... Um, yeah, it's amazing that, like, <clears throat> we can provide any kind of service that would help people get through difficult times in their lives. It's, you know, music and art and all that kind of stuff is about making those connections. And, you know, we were just, we start out being dumb kids just wanting to make music and have fun and make people dance and stuff. And then you start actually touching their lives in very specifically personal ways. And um, it's it's a shocker because, I mean, we're a bunch of goofball idiots. And, like, to make a difference, like, on, on a real deep level in people's lives is kind of like, what, what? You know, so it, and it, you, I mean, you know, we have people that we've listened to and, and respect and admire that we've 
some of us have had the chance to meet these people and, and express our feeling for these people and you know, you put them up on a pedestal and then to be put up there as well is it's funky it's, it's crazy it's like you know funky <laughs> <laughs> you know we all wake up and go to sleep as ourselves and so you know we don't see ourselves the way that others do but to to, yeah. to, to, to have that recognition is um, it, it makes it all really worth it yeah you know it brings a whole different element to the entire deal it also puts a lot more pressure on us sometimes <laughs> <laughs> like oh my god yeah what are they expecting from us all right, this next one is uh, kind of like a two-part. Now, uh, when you guys first came out in the 90s, uh, when Scott became popular, it kind of killed the grunge scene. Uh, you had a lot of haters as far as, you know, Scott sucks, whatever. And, you know, now, present day, people are saying Scott's dead or Scott sucks still. You know, what are your guys' reply to that? You know, obviously, Scott is not dead. You know, you guys are still here. You guys are still rocking. Grinch yeah. never died, first of all. First of all, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> true. No, I, mean, I don't know. It's just, I, don't, I, think, I just think that's a silly thing to say. That kind of music's dead. It's still around. There's lots of fans. Yeah. It's like, just because it's not all over the radio and it's not being jammed down your throat by a bunch of record labels. Yeah. Doesn't People mean it's not a viable musical. Yeah. People genre. said disco sucked, and yet we still have it today. Disco's still around. You know what I mean? Going strong. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we that just uh, seems really stupid to us to say that Ska is dead because we are in a Ska band that tours 300 days out of the year. And there's lots of Ska every night all over the world. And it's like, yeah. Ska fans. That was my one advice. now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But yeah, I mean, we, it's very much alive. I definitely agree. Just a lot of people. And For us, at least. You always hear it, you know. Uh, that's yeah, that's right. not. That's the Whenever you find people that like something, there will always be people that hate something. Yeah. You know? And we're not here to make everybody happy. Haters make you famous, though. It's true. What's that old saying? There's no good good news without Gary good news? Something like that. Is that what that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Alrighty, last question. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's not it. It's that's a great question. No news is good good news without Gary good news. That's it. That's it. There you go. And last but not least, uh, future for Real Big Fish. Um, we already talked about a possible future album. Do uh, you have any other tours coming up, side projects? What can your fans expect? Well, we're taking this tour with the Aquabats to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and then more touring. Hopefully we can go back to Russia. We've just started going there. We've just been there twice now. That's pretty awesome, too. Yeah, the people go crazy. Big shows. Crazy. They're awesome. Uh, South America. South America again, hopefully. We just opened that one up a little bit ago. Nice. Tour in the world. It's true. Playing shows. Doing what we love to do. As long as we can. Awesome. Well, I definitely thank you guys for taking the time out. Thank you. The interview with Sling Inc. Magazine. Right on. Uh, it was definitely an honor and a pleasure because not only 